Hey everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create and we are working on Aesop's Tables and we are on page two. Page two, when I first started this project, I wasn't sure the order I was gonna build this book in. So in one of the future videos, you're gonna hear me say, I'm not sure what page this is, but I've got everything laid out now. And I think it's page four or five where I was, I cut, I started this book from the middle and worked out. Okay, so having said that, we are on page two. And we're gonna, this is a pretty simple page. Um, there is a five inch flap. You're gonna score a half inch on the five inch side. And we're going to apply it to the left hand, I'm thinking, to the left, this is page two. Yes, to the left hand side. I was trying to remember which way it was gonna open. And I want it, this is the spine, I want it to open away from the spine. And I'm stalling because I was looking for this. Okay. So apply your five inch flap scored at half inch on the five inch side to your eight by eight um, pocket page. Okay, and this page is going to feature a dimensional pop-up. Um, it's gonna create kind of a shadow um, feature when we're done. And so those pieces that we're going to be adding, the first one is six and a half by six and a half. So it's square. Then you're gonna score a half inch and put some tape on it. And then you're gonna score it one and a half. And then you can come across and score at five and a half and six and a half. So that is one piece of the pop-up. Okay, so the, the side that has the very wide gusset is gonna to go to the left, and the side that has the two half inch pieces is gonna get installed right here. So we are going to um, take off this tape and we're going to apply it to the score line where the flap meets the pocket page. <clears throat> So we're going to fold that in, and then we're going to apply it to this. Oh, no, we're not. No, we're not. We're going to stop that. Stop, stop. I forgot we have to do some fussy cutting. <laughs> so I'm going to add my backing back on. Sorry about that. That was a little confusing. Um, it's much more straightforward if I do it this way, but we have to fuss cut. It won't work. I mean, we won't get the effect that we want. Okay, so I'm going to put that back on. Set the pocket page and with the flap attached to it aside. And so I went over these measurements one more time, six and a half by six and a half, score at half inch, one and a half, five and a half, and six. And then the second piece is 10 by six and a half. So both of these are six and a half inches tall. You're going to score at half inch, one inch, eight and a half inches, and then nine and a half inches. Okay, so if you look at these, they're, they're not the same width, but they have the same score lines. Um, so you wind up with a wide one inch gusset on this side and a one inch gusset on this side. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is join these two pieces together. <clears throat> and we're not gonna use the first tape line, we're gonna tuck that under. That is what's actually gonna get installed on the pocket page. Now we're gonna join this other half inch gusset together. So I, I only put tape on one side since it's gonna lay right on the other one. And then these two are gonna get actually installed on the page itself. Okay, so let's join these two together. <clears throat> I'm trying to figure out, I think I want it this way. Is that right? Or am I upside down? I think I'll be upside down. Okay. I'm just lining it up. And I just I want to go as close to the score line as possible without going over. Okay. Okay, so that's in. I'm gonna burnish that into place. Okay. And now you'll see on the back side, we've got the two pages joined together, and then this is gonna create the foot that's gonna go into the, um, the album itself, or into the, the pocket page. Okay, so there we are. So now we have this widespread. 
So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add our um, our element. And so this is the lion and the mouse, and I'm going to glue it to this piece, and then I'm going to fussy cut around it. So the first time I did this on page four, I did, used a different technique, and I'm telling, telling you this ahead of time. I did not fussy cut um, this piece out. I just rough cut it and then glued it down and then fussy cut it one time. And it was just too difficult for my hands. So I decided to cut this down the way I want it, lay it on here, and then I'm going to cut around it. Instead of cutting through two pieces of paper, I'm only cutting through one, one layer of cardstock. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, you can do it either way, but like I said, for me, it was, it was too difficult. Um, my hands just didn't want to cooperate with me. Okay, I'm going to burnish this one more time and then we're going to glue this in. And so it's really up to you how you want to fussy cut, um, but this was pretty straightforward. There's a horizon here that was very easy to follow. And then I just went around the tree and I didn't want to cut out too much detail because I, uh, I want it to be fairly rigid. So I didn't want to cut too deep into some of these images because then you got to worry about uh, pieces getting uh, caught up or torn. Okay. And I really do recommend, um, I mean, one of the things you could do is just have cut this strip and then applied this and it would still work, but none of this would be reinforced. And I really think it needs to be reinforced just so you have more structure to your book. And then, and also ideally this is like a pop-up that you could use, you know, for kids. And so the more rigid you make it, um, you know, the more, um, the less you have to worry about it if you've got a child that's opening it and, and looking at it. It could also be used as, as an album too. Um, and like I said, I was trying to do something a little different. I think this is, and I think the collection, this works really well for the collection. Now you can cut around this so that you have a black border. I'm not doing that. Uh, I'm cutting it right down to the image, but that's a, that's pure preference if you want to cut um, to leave a little bit of a black border all the way around it. Okay, so now we're ready to apply this. And I'm just going to center it between this score line and this score line. And I am leaving a black border on the bottom and a little bit to the, each of the sides. Okay, now that's the easy stuff. Okay, so that's in, I'm gonna burnish it all the way. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is fussy cut around it. So I'm gonna start and then I'm gonna pause. And uh, when I come back, you'll see what the finished product looks like because it's just too tedious to, to record all of that. And I really need to, uh, because of my vision, need to bring it very close to me to see, and that means that you won't be able to see it anyway. All you'll see is the top of my head. I'm not really worried about the glue coming out because I plan to cut right, right next to the image. So even though the glue dries clear, it does, it does have a texture effect. Um, okay. So in order for this mechanism to work, one of the things is that's going to have to happen is we're going to do a score down the line. But for right now, let's just focus on trimming out um, this paper. So I'm going to start here. That was a little difficult because I'm cutting through two layers plus tape. That's really the, the worst of it. Everything else should come off pretty quickly. Okay. This is such a neat collection, you guys. I love it. I love it, I love it. When I, I was looking at some of the other Chow Bella collections, one of them's Neverland. This whole concept that these pop-ups or it's really not exactly a pop-up. It's a dimensional effect, which I guess is a pop-up in and of itself. But I do think a lot of these techniques could be applied to a Neverland book. I think it would make a neat book, another neat children's book. Okay, I'm going to cut off all this excess. So basically, you see what I'm doing here is I'm just cutting around uh, my design here. And I'm going to pause right now 
finish up and then I'll be back and we'll, um, I'll show you how to install it in the book. Hey everyone, um, I went ahead and let's set this aside, finished uh, trimming this all out so you can see what the front and the back are and, and now it feels much more rigid, which I think is a good thing. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pull our pocket page with a flat back end and we're gonna put our base or our foundation uh, on. And this is from the 8x8 collection and it's basically the same um, as I'm using the 12 by 12 and fussy cutting it and on the 8 by 8 I'm using the reverse side. And I just realized I did not ink it, so I'll do that real quick while I'm chatting. Um, and then after we get these in, we will add, <clears throat> actually, I'm going to try something a little different. Um, when I was learning how to do this, I built some uh, prototypes, uh, but of course I didn't put decorator paper on it. Um, I was just building black cardstock pieces. So I'm trying to figure out the order in which the, the paper should be applied. And I just thought of something different, and I think that's what I'm going to do. And we'll see how it works out. <clears throat> so these pieces are going to get installed right here on this hinge. And I am going to install them now, and then we're going to add these papers. And that way, at least this hinge will be covered. Yes, that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> I had to think it through. We won't be able to do it with the side ones because when it's completely up and open, there's paper that is going to be exposed here. So let's go ahead and get these down. Then we'll add our base pages, uh, base designer page, and then, um, then we're going to adhere this on top of the designer paper. Um, the other thing is you could try to do some slits, but oh, I think that's going to add so much complexity. I'm not even going to try. So I'm going to apply um, this anchor right here to the score line, which is right here. So the seam between these two flanges is going to go right here on this uh, score line. Okay. And so what I'm going to do, I think, is apply one side and then close the flap. Oh, hi, Nala. She startled me. <laughs> it's hard because it's sticking to me. And I don't want it to grab before I'm ready. The other thing you could do is just expose a little bit of tape until you get it where you want it and then sort of pull it like a, a, a zipper, which I've done uh, before many times. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now I'm just going to close this. There we go. So now we have that in, and you can see how it's holding our designer paper up from the uh, base pocket page. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and add this. It's upside down, it doesn't really matter. It just matters that you do them both the same uh, orientation. And I want the um, snake skin to, to be running vertical, not horizontal. But it doesn't really matter. Just choose one and do both the same. Okay. Now I'm going to add my designer paper. Oh, yeah. Oh, mm. no, I'm not. I'm going to stop because we need a, a fastener. So I want to put um, a magnet here and a magnet on the opposing side. Sorry about that. Almost breezed right past that. So I'm gonna put a magnet here and then I'm gonna close it and it's gonna be somewhere over here but uh, I'm gonna cover it with this paper. So I need a minute for it to dry, be right back. Okay, that should do it. Um, I'll make the permanent placement on this side after I get my designer paper back down. I'm going to reapply some glue, some of it dried.
I forgot to tell you, on this piece, I actually wound up trimming the 12 by 12 down <sighs> three quarters of an inch. So I took um, a sliver off um, the left hand side, which had uh, a spear on it. So I trimmed it right down there. So the finished designer paper is 11 and a quarter inches wide. If you do 11 and a quarter, regardless of which side you trim it off of, it's going to fit on this um, pop up mechanism. Now, part of the reason I have to trim it down is um, the way these uh, fit into the book. <clears throat> if I didn't trim it down, these edges might stick up. Okay. So the next thing is we'll go ahead and add the, the magnet on the opposing page, and then we'll put the designer paper down. Yeah. Very good. It's a little too close to the edge. Much better. Did I ink it? Yes, I did. we go. Now we're ready to attach the two flaps. And so the way that we're going to do that, we'll do this side first. I'm sorry, I keep just putting Go ahead and close this down and then you've got your half inch and then one inch. So you're going to lay these both flat and then you're going to close the flap on it and that's it now we're going to repeat that process on this side we're going to remove the tape and we're going to fold both of these gussets down and then close the book all right I'm going to double check that because this is such a long piece, it's easy for it to torque slightly. So just pay attention to how it's running across the bottom of your book as you close your page. Let's grab before I'm ready. And it should be flush with the bottom of the page. Okay, so when you open it, you can see now there's some dimension there. Okay. So this piece here is what's keeping the center from collapsing. And these two pieces, when you open, is what's causing it to pop out. Okay, so that's that. So the next thing is I fussy cut some elements from the 12 by 12 page um, to create some dimension in the back here. So we have a couple of choices. And this, by the way, the story is actually going to be on the front of this flap. Okay. And I want to keep in mind what it looks like when it's closed and how I embellish here so that it's, it looks interesting when it's opened and closed. So this is one of the elements that I fussy cut and I was thinking about tucking it down like so. So it looks like the line is reaching for the giraffes, even in a closed position. So it would look like so. So I would apply this, um, and I, I do need to ink it directly to the base pocket page. This is another element that I fussy cut, and I'm going to add that over here just to keep it interesting. 
and then I'm going to layer on this shadow lion so he looks like he's off in the distance. I'm thinking I'll do something just like that. And then I've got a little bit of greenery that I can add, and I think I might add this right here on top or slightly behind, I haven't decided. And what's last? And then I've got some more reeds that I can use somewhere. I'm running into them. There we go. So we could um, do something like that, create even, even more dimension. So I think that's coming along pretty nicely. I've got just little bits of this and that to add to make it interesting. And depending on what you fussy cut off the page, this is another beautiful element um, from that same page. And I kind of went back and forth about which one to use. So this one was also in a frame like this. And and you can see the way the bottom is shaped. I basically just cut around the frame on the bottom and then I cut into the picture on top. Because this was a full image and not uh, a, um, a side, the only fit way I felt I could use this is if it was behind something. Otherwise his head's gonna be partially cut off. So that's why I chose this image. And the last thing I might do, if I'm gonna tuck him back here and hide this mouse, I may fussy cut this little mouse out and put him someplace else in the layout. So this is roughly what I'm thinking about, but I am going to fuss around with it a little bit more. And I'm going to actually ink all the edges and then I'm going to um, lift them slightly off the back of the page. So I'll either use foam tape or chipboard to raise them. Um, and I'm not sure which, um, it'll depend on, I think really where it's at. The closer it is to the hinge, the more it needs to squish down just to keep the page closed. The further out on the edges, the less important it becomes. So I think I'll probably put chipboard behind him and I might do some foam tape behind the trees because they're right here on this hinge. Um, and I didn't add an extra gusset. Which, if I did another one of these books, I might learn how to do that. Um, but just getting this mechanism to work without an extra gusset in the middle was, was quite enough of a task for me on this project. So that's where I'm headed. I'm going to take a break, get these inked, get some chipboard on the back of them, and then we'll put them all down together when I get back shortly. And, uh, oh, by the way, here's that um, piece that I had trimmed off right here. So it's three quarters of an inch, and that's why this is not 12 inches across. And you can see when you close it, if, you, if I made it 12 inches across, this would have protruded at least a half inch, which we don't want. Okay, I'll be back in a few. Okay, I have fussy cut and paperback cardstock. Got my cover here ready. So I think we're ready to go ahead and finish page two by adding the embellishments <clears throat> and so I further fussy cut this it had more on the bottom and I cut more away and then as part of this total image that the, the um, mouse was on here and I'm going to separate them so they're they're actually on two different layers so that's what I'm going to do right here then I've got some of these reeds that are left over. I'm going to tuck a little behind here. This is actually going to go on the pocket page. This is going to be popped with chipboard. And then I got a couple little other elements that I'm still trying to work into the overall flow. So the first thing we want to do is, oh, and, and the giraffes that were here, I decided to cut them off. At first, I was going to leave them and then glue the mouse to it. But they weren't in the right location. So I'm going to glue the mouse on top. But first, I'm going to locate the lion. And then I want to make sure that the mouse is within uh, the paw range of, of the lion. Now, the placement of the lion, I want to be so that it's uh, predominantly exposed when this flap is closed, because I think that makes for a very interesting layout here. Okay, so I'm just checking to see where things are lining up. And I think if I put this little reed on, just on the outside of this hinge, this is gonna be the right location. 
Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and put the, the lion in and then we'll locate the mouse. Okay. So just to let you know what I did on the back is I put two layers of chipboard on the center of the image. So this is going to be more forward than the sides and I'm going to glue the sides down just as they are. So it creates kind of um, uh, an arc here. <clears throat> so I'm going to glue the center down first and then I'm going to peel back the edges and get some glue there after I get get it pretty much placed. So I don't want to be jiggling it around and having glue flow out. Okay, that looks good. It looks straight. Okay, so I'm going to press that into place and hold it for a second. Now there's two choices we have for the paw. Um, we can put the mouse here where it's right under his paw um, with, the, with the door closed, or we can shift it over so that it's under the paw when it's open. And I've kind of gone back and forth, I'm not sure yet. Let's go ahead and glue um, these bits down so they don't get torn. Okay, and then we've got a little bit to glue down here. And along the side. <laughs> That's my dog. <laughs> My son is uh, just came downstairs, so she's talking to him. <laughs> That's a happy noise for her. Okay, so it's creating some dimension there. Doesn't that look nice? Okay. All right, I th I think I'm going to put the mouse here. And part of the reason I was going back and forth is because I wind up covering up these words. So there's a workaround and that is I fussy cut some of these um, images out and I think I can lay that down and then put the mouse in there and it's all covered up. So that is the current plan. Okay, now I'll just add the mouse right on top. Um, the mouse is cardstock back, and I did it twice and fussy cut around it, so it's nice and rigid, but it's not as thick as, um, what's the word I'm going to use? No, not as thick as chipboard. I'm going to try to set it so that a good portion of him is attached. There we go. I'm going to hold that in place for just a second. He actually needs to smooch forward a little. Right there, okay. That's gonna be it. So there you go. Now when I close it, he's gonna shift uh, to the right. Okay, I'm liking that. So the next thing is I've got a little bit of this left and I'm gonna fussy cut a little more. I'm gonna, this, this line is too straight. So I'm gonna follow that read. It just makes it a little more interesting. I was thinking about putting it behind the head, but I'm not sure. I also fussy cut this piece of um, foliage that we can work in somewhere, like maybe here. Not sure. And I got a couple other little bits. So I think I don't really like that. So I do like this. So I think I'm going to go ahead and add just a little bit more. Uh, interest down here. And then here is the lion and mouse. This is cu cut from the um, A4 pack. I had to think about that for a second. So I'm going to set this all aside for a second. I'm happy with where we're headed. We still have to do a little bit more work. But let's go ahead and add this. This is also, this is from the patterns pack. And it's actually, um, it was one of the images on the cover that I cut out. And that's the flip side. I'm gonna go ahead and get this in, and then we're gonna put the story line down. And then I'm gonna to try to decide uh, where I want lion and mouse, if I want it here or if I want it over here on the panel, on the flap. Okay, and then here is our story. 
that we're going to put here. So I could use this as like a title. It just blends in so much, but that's kind of the nature of the paper. So I don't want to fight with it. So I'm going to raise uh, this image slightly up so that this lion on the bottom is, is completely uncovered. And I think I'm going to go ahead and put some chipboard behind it just to add that extra dimension. So I'm going to do a little trimming. Okay. And then I'm going to fill in the fill in with um, little pieces that I that I have laying here and here and there. So I'll put a couple pieces here. See if I've got anything handy. I always have some left over from previous projects. <clears throat> There we go. Good enough. And just make sure yeah, that the lines going across were even and they are okay we're getting there okay so I think what I want to do is add this over here slightly tucked behind the the, um, the mouse and I'm gonna put it on the same level as the mouse Well, because we put this so high, we're definitely not going to use the line and the mouse there. So we want to use it here. And I want to see what it looks like with the pant with the flap closed. Okay. There we go. And then here are my last couple of pieces. I keep trying to find a way to use this, but it doesn't seem to fit anywhere just right. So this was another piece I was going back and forth about using, and I kind of like it here in the, in the background, but I'm not sure. I don't like that. And that's an option. And it looks like it's kind of tucked behind that reed. I don't know. What do you guys think? I don't like that. So this is the one piece I'm not sure about. Can't either has to be back on this side of the mouse or all the way over. And then when you bring them all the way over, these are just too different, I think. Um, so I'm going to leave it as is. 
And then um, I may add some additional embellishing after I finish uh, planning the rest of the book. Um, and I'll know what paper is left over. So I may have some more elements such as this to add. I don't know. I mean, you could add that there, but I think it's too much. This would obviously be the place where you would place your photo. And having said that just now, I would have um, just glued the bottom, left this open so you could slightly tuck your photo behind it if you're deciding to use this as um, an album as well as a book. So that's it for page two. I hope you guys enjoyed this and I'll be back soon with page three.